we are at the recent festival in Stanwell Park. Supporters of objecting to the change from 70 Hacking River protected environment have a stand to collect submissions from the concerned public. <laughs> Okay. Well, Sutherland Council is totally against this, and they have put in a submission against the Wollongong Council. As well as that, Sutherland Council has actually written a letter to Christina Keneally expressing uh, a whole lot of dissatisfaction about that. We've been peddled this story uh, about E2 going to E3 since ever. The classification that everyone was asked to write about on this with LEP 2009 was a transition from 7D to E2. And then, without any consultation to the, of the public, either before or just after submissions closed, they changed it to E3. And we've been getting a lot of information continuously at different meetings from the head of planning of Wollongong, of the person in charge of planning Wollongong Council in charge of this, David Green, that it was because if you had a house in E2 and it burnt down, you couldn't build on it. Like you had no existing rights. I have here a letter received today, uh, sorry, received last Thursday. I sent an email about this on the 31st of the 8th. And this is from New South Wales Planning. And in it, uh, uh, Brett Whitworth refers to the fact that uh, people have existing rights. So the argument going from E2 to E3 is, is just incorrect. You cannot say it any clearer. If existing rights can be established for the destroyed dwelling, a development application could be lodged to replace that dwelling. And here is, here is, Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979, and that's the relevant parts. Continuation of and limitations of existing use. They have existing rights. There is no need to change 7D to E3 at all. Page 6 of the Illawarra Escarpment Strategic Management Plan, which refers to regions from Bald Hill South, talks about on page six, sustaining our natural resources. The key threatening process is what can damage wilderness. Number one, land clearing. And all this program, all this proposed changes will have land clear, various degrees of land clearing. This will be clearing, uh, this will be raising all sorts of trees and and the understory to, to raising it to the ground. There'll be just complete denudation through there in, 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 if it's developed the same as land comp one, two, and three. There'll be major uh, denudation of the region there. That region there is like that hillside over there. Uh, it's got very, very slow. I pass. Bull Eye Pass has a, 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 has a rise over run of one in five at best. It's one in seven and one in five. This road here, Kalaroo, is so steep, the council trucks do not go down it. Uh, if they get a council truck down there, they can't go up it, and all the houses along Kalaroo have to take their bins to the top. So we have a road at one in three where council trucks cannot service it. This road here, if it goes in, is one in two and a half. This is twice as steep as Bull Eye Pass. Going down here from Bald Hill, the fire trucks are coming out to rescue cars that have had all sorts of accidents on the slippery wet roads where leaves have actually touched the road surface. This would be an absolute nightmare. So opening up that would be a major problem. But just going back, that would have land clearing. This would have land clearing. If you change them from environmental zones to business district to uh, lesser classifications where you can put more houses in, you have to get more land clearing. You get land clearing for the actual house. You get land clearing for the asset protection zone around that house. If we look at the IESM, it says main threats are land clearing, fragmentation. If you put in a highway, you fragment one side from the other. If you put in uh, a, a railway with fences either side, you fragment the, wild, the, the 
you, you actually fragment the natural movements of wildlife across that zone. And yet here in a broad scale you've got fragmentation with this very, very uh, well vegetated region. It's as vegetated as that. You got a fragmentation there, fragmentation there, fragmentation there, fragmentation there, fragmentation there, fragmentation there. We've already got all that. The yellow bits are what they're giving back. It's very nice of them to give back what we've already got. The problem is that we're actually getting these sub sub major subtractions, which in total add up to more fragmentation. The other problem is that once these areas go to things like B6 or to RU2, there's no reference whatsoever to it being an environmental zone again. There's uh, a golf driving range there, there's a, a, a nursery next to it, there's a, um, a daycare next to that, there's a number of businesses along here in an environmental zone. So they conduct their business knowing that they're in an environmental zone and that places limits on them. B6 is classified as a business corridor, yet it is just across the road from this special water catchment area of War Ron Orr Dam. So what is a special catchment area? Right, well here we are. We've got a sign here that says special area to protect our drinking water. No entry. Maximum penalty, $11,000. No entry, no vehicles, no bicycles, no motorbikes, no horse riding, no pets. In short, Sydney Water doesn't want you in there. With good reason. This is the catchment for our drinking water. This represents an eastern part of the Warrenora catchment system. So the reason we are pointing this out is that it's just on the other side of the Prince's Highway from the B6 Business Corridor, which is located in the 70 Hacking River Protected Environment. Just one of the inconsistent proposals that could go ahead if the 70 is not objected to. Here you see just some of the submissions collected at the festival. That's just this morning. That's nothing compared to what we've got. All up. All up, including objection submissions from previous reviews of 7D that still count, there are about 10,000 objection submissions. It's all up to you to help protect this area, so check out www.wollongong.nsw.governor.au and click on Review of 7D Hacking River Catchment Environment Protection Zone and send your objection submission and help save this sensitive environment for now and future generations.